Greetings, my name is Cosmic and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you part 3 of my series of guides showing you how to build a historically inspired castle in Minecraft. This is Castle Caramel. So far we have built the gatehouse, the walls, and the towers. Today I will show you how to build the keep. The keep is the primary residence of a castle as well as the most fortified structure. As I am building, I will be talking about the different rooms that you could find in a keep. Once again, here's the layout of the castle. Also, the keep is the structure where I use a lot of items from the Supplement Entries mod. I will also be using the BBT Invisible Item Frame and the Famous Paintings Resource Packs. Links will be in the description below. Alrighty, here we are, and I'm going to build the keep for you guys. Now, the keep is rather big and has lots of detail, so I'm going to try to go pretty fast here. First things first, the keep is going to be 17 by 17 blocks uh, big. It's going to be a perfect square. And the first thing we're going to do is lay down the foundations. And to do that, we're going to dig out all of this dirt, excavate it all, three blocks down. I'm going to go take care of that, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, now that we have excavated all this dirt, the next thing we're going to do, uh, like I said, we, are, we dug three blocks down. We're going to take out this top row of dirt and the concretes on the very top so that we can replace them with other materials. I'll be right back once again. Alrighty, I am back once again, and that should be the end of off-camera work. I just felt the time lapses of digging dirt was going to be pretty boring. Uh, but there is one more time lapse we're going to do. <laughs> is we're going to put onto this very bottom layer the floor, which is going to be deep slate tile slabs, and then we're going to fill the walls with stone bricks. Um, you could leave these corners right here. They're not going to be seen once everything gets built up. But this is what we're going to do next, and I'm going to kick this off into time lapse. Alrighty, that should do it for the time-lapse stuff. One thing I want to talk about is this 3x3 space right here. I'll get back to what this is shortly, but what we're going to do for now is take this deep slate tile slabs and create full blocks around here because we'll be going straight down this little 3x3 space, so we need to cover that up. And then do the same, replace the dirt here with stone bricks, and then we can leave the rest for now. Okay, now I'm going to start building the actual details of the keep. Hopefully this goes smoothly. There's a lot of details here and a lot of not intricate building techniques, but there's just a lot going on. And especially on this bottom area, it's going to be just a lot of random stuff. Like I mentioned earlier, we're building the foundations of the castle. This will be the Undercroft. The Undercroft of castles can contain many things. Sometimes it's just the foundations to help support the weight of the rest of the structure. As I mentioned in the last video with the towers, um, they sometimes dug into the ground and build up the towers from like a bedrock layer, which would also apply here to the castle. Uh, but the undercrofts could also have functional uses to them, such as storage, which is the primary use of our undercroft in this keep, or they could also serve as dungeons. As I said, this is gonna be mostly storage. First things first, we're gonna build the stairway uh, so we can get up and down from the undercroft. So we're gonna go one, two, three, and on the fourth block, we're gonna place two spruce stairs. Uh, place them upside down just to make it a little uh, thicker going up and then we're going to build up the stairs until we reach the edge of the wall right here and eventually we'll build up the walls and the floor will be above us. Now we're going to take some stone bricks and we're going to start building some pillars and some vaulting techniques or at least they'll hint at vaulting and what we're going to do is on each wall count nine blocks so you get to the very center one two three four five six seven eight nine build up three stone bricks and you're going to do that on all four sides my apologies not nine it's going to be eight one two three four five six seven eight eight blocks is the center. Nine blocks you're counting from the corners, but I wasn't counting from the corners. And like I said, they're going to be three blocks tall. Put 
slide an upside down stone brick stair onto each of them. And then we're going to line ourselves up until we're at the very center of the floor and build up three stone bricks. Upside down stairs in the direction, in each direction. And then to help create the vaulting, we're going to take more stone bricks and build them across. We're actually going to make a T shape with these. Uh, so we're going to have bricks coming in from the sides and then going towards the back from the front. We're actually going to put strip spruce logs because in terms of the floor plan on the first floor, this whole space right here is going to be one large room. And then these two are going to be two uh, smaller separate rooms. So that's why we've got this little bit of a difference here. What we can do next is actually continue with the strip spruce logs and on the sides here, straight from the middle block, yeah, I had to double check that for a moment. It does not look like the middle block here on, because this is one, two, three, four blocks, but in the actual floor plan, this will be a wall right here, and then another wall right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so it will be the middle block right here. Strip spruce logs all the way across. Same thing on this side. So it'll basically be the second block from this pillar right here. And we're actually going to continue these strip, strip spruce logs all the way across to the other side to, support, to provide structural support for the floors. Uh, this, until you get to this space, then you want to take strip spruce logs from this central beam. That's where we're constructing our wooden beams for the floor above, above us. And so that we're doing this so they meet right there. And then I think uh, it goes right here. There we go, that should do it. And then before we put the actual floors in, let's put up torches on each of the pillars on the front of these pillars and then on all sides of those pillars just to provide some decent lighting. Then take spruce slabs. We're gonna create the floors now. And right now it is looking a little wonky. I guess what we could do now is build up the walls just so that it's not just this hanging floor. Uh, leave the corners. And now, yeah, that should actually about do it for the main structure of the undercroft. I'm going to pull out the decorative details for this and show you guys a little bit of the process for the decorating uh, the undercroft or at least putting stuff into it. Give me one moment. All right, once again, here we are in the undercroft and when it comes to quote decorating the undercroft, I don't really have much to say. Um, you, it's mostly just for storage. You can just put barrels and chests wherever you want. But I'll try to give you guys a couple ideas of where to put stuff. When I first built the keep, I did have a little bit of a plan in mind. Uh, over here was a bit of a, a storage area, area primarily for weapons and armor. Uh, and this area was more of a storage area for food. And that's a couple of examples of what you would store in a castle. It would be food and other supplies, weapons and armor. The, these two diagonal well, rooms. These two spaces diagonally are just, it's just more storage area. Like I said, there's really not much, honestly not much to say here. Uh, as I'm trying to say, nothing specific you have to do here, honestly. Like, you can just create shelves, uh, pile up barrels, pile up barrels wherever you want them to. I did try to like make up, make the most use of the walls uh, all around armor stands and also in the middle of the space like you need to like leave some walkable areas so i would create like these two by two i just can't jump very high because of the ceiling these two by two spaces with barrels and chests and other stuff just to make the most use of the floor of the floor space but allow for walkable areas i put a grindstone 
right here as well. And I actually put an item frame on top of it, which I should have uh, turned off the resource pack for that. This is the BBT invisible item frame where it makes the item frames invisible so that if you were to say, take a sword, you can just place it on there and there's no item frame. There's just a sword on it. And I think that's pretty cool. Allows you to place items where, you know, on, on tables, on shelves, etc., without having to have a very obvious item frame sitting there too. I am going to finish up this room right here and I'll get back to you guys in just a moment. Welcome back. Here is what I've done so far for the Undercroft. Everything you do in under here, it's pretty random. Just build up piles of barrels and chests, place the occasional lantern for more light. Here's an example of what I was talking about earlier with like this being a sort of armory. You can use item frames and put weapons in them like on top of shelves and use the BUT invisible item frame resource pack to make the item frames invisible so that all you see is the weapon. And then you got armor stands you can put armor onto, a fletching table, just uh, building up just piles of boxes, put shell or chests on the shelves, just whatever you want to do. So a bit something like that. And like I said, this is a bit of a food storage area. And but to represent that, I was just putting cauldrons uh, in this area. Nothing too creative, just placing cauldrons in this general vicinity. I'm going to finish up decorating the rest of the Undercroft and I'll get back to you guys shortly. Alrighty, I am back once again, have completely filled up this space with chests and barrels. Like, I, like I've said before, multiple times before, you can just place barrels and chests randomly in here, but with a little bit of organization, where like you have these little islands of barrels and chests just piled up so that you can still at least walk around them, but you can make up more use of the floor plan. Here is this part of the room right over here. I did put a torch on this wall because a bat spawn in here and they can get pretty annoying when trying to record just the constant squeaking just gets on my nerves <laughs> you can pause the video if you want to try to copy this i wouldn't recommend it it'd be pretty difficult to get all this down i'd say just have at it once again i am using supplementary mod to enhance the visuals a little bit so like i've been doing for pretty much the rest of this castle replacing torches with sconces and we have these item shelves which you can place they are placed right on the bottom end of a block and then you can put weapons and other items up here which i think gives it a very nice appearance and last but certainly not least got these sex here that you can kind of put wherever you want just to enhance the appearance of the storage just a little bit i think the sacks are actually a pretty cool addition by supplementary mods by the supplementaries mod it uh, just makes it a little bit better so let me go turn on the resource pack and you guys can take a look at it and now that i've got the resource pack on you can see that the item frames are invisible and thus you can actually very clearly see the item like as if it's just sitting there on the shelf and just to let you guys know this three by three spot i will cover later i'll say that for the very last part of this video and now i think it'll be time to build up the rest of the keep Alrighty, I am back now. Uh, it's been actually a full day since I recorded the last clip. I was not very awake yesterday and very alert, and I felt like I was creating a poor quality clips. So I decided to take a day to rest, and now I'm back, and we can start again. First thing we're going to do is take Polish Endocyte, and the keep is going to be 12 blocks tall from the ground. Alrighty, and I think the next thing we're going to do is at least take stone bricks and bridge the pillars together just along the top. And something I want to mention is that this keep is very large, fairly large, uh, at least historically. It's kind of a, it's going to have a little bit of everything that you could find in a keep, um, or almost everything, which is perfectly fine, uh, especially for Minecraft. But this is actually a rather large keep. Uh, in the future, I may make smaller keeps just to show you guys what a lot of a lot more castles were like in the past because obviously making a smaller keep is easier than building a larger keep or a larger castle in general not to mention the fact that oftentimes castles were just the keep itself and that was it but have, of course having the addition of walls and towers and a gatehouse makes a castle more defensible but a keep by itself is also just could also just be considered a castle anyway what we're going to do next is we're going to create the doorway 
Now we're going to destroy these two blocks right here, right in the very center with this uh, spruce timber beam right here, and then the one to the very right, place down, place down, <laughs> polish andesite. I don't know what happened with my voice there. Critical pillars, just to for enough, for there to be enough room for a doorway, a, a two wide doorway. And then place in the doors, and then we're going to fill up this wall with stone bricks. It will. Uh, we'll fill it up to two blocks above the doorway itself. Basically, we got the wall for the first floor done, and we're just going to build up. We're going to finish up the rest of the walls, and I just wanted to take the time to specify where the windows are going to go. So, on the front, we're going to create these skinny windows that will still provide some lighting from the outside, but are small enough to one, keep heat inside, and two, make it difficult for attackers to come in, especially when we build the windows on the back side. I'll definitely cover that when we get over there. What we're gonna do is create, I guess, one pillar of stone bricks. I'm gonna put in polished andesite stairs on the bottom and the top. Create another pillar of stone bricks and then another set of stairs. And that is what it's gonna look like on this side. And we're gonna put in the glass later. Decided to take care of that a little bit later when I had more room in my inventory, <laughs> and we're going to mirror it on this, this side. And then I'm going to fill in the rest of this wall with stone bricks. And then over here, I'm actually going to I'll fill in the wall, the rest of the wall down here afterwards. I'm just going to bridge the stone bricks across just so I know what I'm doing. And for the windows back here, I'm going to put in two, I guess, pillars of stone bricks. Then we're going to put in polished andesite stair on the top, another polished andesite stair, one block underneath uh, the other one. This way, you create a very small window ah, that uh, makes it very harder for attackers to come in because obviously a person's not going to be able to fit through this one block tall window. And we're doing the smaller window on the outside, the outside of the castle is, so that, once again, it makes it harder for attackers to come in. Whereas on this side, yeah, it's still relatively small, but it's a little bit bigger, and we can afford to make it a little bigger because it's at, still on the inside of the castle. So that's what the windows are going to look like on that side and the front side. And we're going to mirror it on this side too. And that almost, yeah, that pretty much does it for the, uh, the windows of the keep. And before I fill out the rest of the walls off camera, we're going to finish up this little entryway. We're going to create a two by two by two uh, block of stone bricks right here. And we're going to take stone brick stairs and create a little stairway over here from the path. And then we'll take trap doors and create a little bridge right here. Basically, this is like a, a mini drawbridge, essentially. I did talk about drawbridges like at the front of the castle or at the front of the gatehouse, or, which is a possibility if you want to do it. And you could also do it at the front of the keep, create this smaller walkway. You, you could even create like a full-fledged, uh, or almost a full-fledged, like, quote, gatehouse in this area, which would be actually called a barbican. But what we're doing here is just basically, it would just be planks that we just put down or throw off the, the main walkway so that it makes it harder for attackers to get across and into the keep. This is like a basically a, a cheap version of a drawbridge but you know it still serves its purpose to make it harder for attackers to be able to get up and into the castle and that about does it and i am going to fill out the rest of the walls and actually even put up the battlements up here too it's just going to be the same style as before uh, we'll see if i time lapse that part or not Alrighty, so i filled out uh, the walls of the keep and put up most of the battlements but there was actually a couple more things i want to do before we actually go inside the keep First of all, writing some lighting on the outside of the keep. So we're going to place andesite walls uh, diagonally to the corners of the doorway. Then we can hang lanterns from underneath. That's one way you can do it. Or the supplementaries mod allows you to place lanterns directly onto the side of a wall. I think both appearances look great. It's completely up to you. And then what you, want, you can do is take your banners and place them wherever you feel like is appropriate for decoration uh, to show you know, whose castle this belongs to. Uh, I think, well, that was not what I intended. 
Uh, but you could do that if you like. Then I decided to show you guys how to do the battle mist real quick in case you haven't watched my other videos. Polish andesite stairs upside down for the corbels. Place up a couple of andesite blocks for the merlons. And then place upside down stone brick stairs for the crenels, which leave a gap for the matriculations. And that will do it for the outside of the keep. Now on the inside, I decided to do this part right away. So we're gonna build up the walls. And as I mentioned earlier, the main floor plan is gonna be one large rectangular room towards the front and the two smaller square rooms towards the back. So following this shape of the stone bricks that we already have here, we can fill, divide the two square rooms up with these stone bricks. And then what you want to do next is place a couple doors uh, right on the other side of this uh, dividing wall. And what you can do is take polished andesites, replace them, build up some stone bricks, do it like that, and then place doors on the inside, I think. I think that'll do it. Put the doors to the open outward from the dividing wall. And then you can fill the rest with stone bricks. Basically, the floors are going to be have a bit of headroom. It's like the first floor is going to be one, two, three, four full blocks, and then the spruce will be on the fifth block above above it. And the same thing will generally happen: one, two, three, four, and five. Although the ceiling for this the second floor is going to be a little bit different from this one because there's going to be an actual triangular shape to the ceiling to it. But yeah, as I stated. The floor plan is going to be the same on both floors, so you're just going to repeat the same process up here. And yeah, that's going to be just the exact same doors on both sides. And then I want to fill out the rest of these walls, and I'll get back to you guys with some new building materials so we can start decorating the inside of the keep. All right, now we are on the inside of the keep, and before we actually can start uh, building the first room, I will have to make one correction and then add a staircase here. Um, the strip spruce logs are actually one block closer, and then on top of this uh, wooden beam, we can place spruce stairs, which we will build up five blocks tall until we get to almost the edge of the of the wall where we got one block of space here and then we're going to place spruce slabs which is where we'll walk on and then we can start putting in the wooden beams to support the the floor above it and this will basically mirror the floor plan down here place uh, mirror the strip spruce log that was underneath and put that up there and later I'll put in the spruce slabs. I just want to keep some light coming in so that bats don't start spawning and creating a lot of noise. I will at least put the beams into these rooms as well. Just mirror what's underneath. Just make sure that, you know, you can actually walk on it when you come in through the door. And that will do it for building the support beams for the next floor. Now we can actually start decorating what is going to be the Great Hall. Alrighty, so this is going to be the Great Hall for the keep and this is basically going to be the primary dining area for the Lord and his sort, his servants, his knights, etc. Little known fact about castles is there wasn't, there usually wasn't an actual throne room in uh, castles. It was kind of a waste of space to just create a whole room for someone to just sit in. Uh, this would basically have, maybe have that same purpose. You just put aside the tables that or in the dining hall and maybe have a little bit of a throne room aesthetic, but normally that would just be just the place to eat. So first things first, we're gonna create basically the head table using dark oak stairs and slabs, a couple blocks away from this end wall. And then we're gonna create a couple of chairs here, basically for the Lord and the lady. Take oak, dark oak trap doors, uh, create a high back for the seats. Can actually take a lantern and place it I think right here oh not there that was interesting to look at uh, or to watch create put it hang it right on this wooden beam just above the, the table or right 
offset by one block. Next thing we're going to do is create a hearth in the middle, provide warmth for the for this room. Now this hearth is a little bit big and kind of in the way, but I wanted it to be like right in the center and we can place a campfire right in the middle. Uh, the hearth is made of polished inside stairs. And you can actually take a shovel, right click the campfire to douse the fire in case it's just too noisy for you or it's creating lag or something. Going on to the back, we're going to take dark oak slabs, create a couple benches, four wide. And then take spruce trap doors to create the ends of this table. Uh, I used full slabs for that table because with these chairs you can still see that this is basically a table with chairs but over here I felt if I just put slabs here and the slabs here it didn't really give the same aesthetic as like a bench and a table so I want to make it very clear what it was put a lantern on this end for more lighting and then over here we're going to put a little trap door or a little table made of spruce trap doors and then we're going to put a barrel on top facing upward for a keg basically for mead or whatever other drinks you want in there then we can actually take the banners since this is where the lord and the lady sits or the lord and the or the king and the queen whatever whoever this castle is made for you can put banners up behind them on the wall that basically does it for the vanilla materials in this room I'm going to move on to the supplementaries mod materials all right so the last thing we can do actually before we go on to the supplementaries mod is take some item frames and we can put them on the wall like right about here and then you can make up some maps and place them in the item frame so you can get a view of the land around you. Obviously this is basically like a flat world so we're not going to get a very very interesting looking map of the surrounding area but this is just an example to show you guys that you can do this if you want. What you can do next though is take some candles from the supplementaries mod and stack them up on the ends of the head table and then take flint and steel and you can light them. A couple of goblets, put them in front of the seats. And you can take water bottles and fill them with water, which I think is pretty cool. And we can do the same over here with this table. It's got a faucet here, which is kind of advanced looking, but I figured you could put this on the keg, give it a, an actual spout for you to pour your drink from. And then the doormats aren't, I mean, I'm sure there was a, some representation of doormats historically, but I put doormats here in the around right for the doorway because I thought they they, they blend in with the wood. And actually, you got like uh, villagers or other mobs in here. This would actually keep them from being able to exit the castle in case you want to keep them inside for whatever reason, which I think works just fine. And you could probably put them right on the inside of these doors too if you'd like and that about does it for the great hall i think especially with the hearth in the middle it is a little messy but next time i'll definitely think more about where to place everything but next we're going to go into the kitchen and take care of the decorating in there all right so next is going to be the kitchen which is going to be in this room back here and one of the first things we can do is take some smokers create basically an oven uh, put an upside down andesite stair on either side. Uh, no particular design I was really following here. I just kind of actually let's do it this way, I think. And then build it up across the top like that. I think that kind of works. Uh, and that still works. Okay. Uh, then you can take a cauldron, put it in the middle, fill it with water. Basically, like water in the middle of the room to use. I This is kind of where my knowledge is starting to lack is how everything actually looks like. Um, in like a castle kitchen. I'm gonna create a bench or a table there. We'll stack up some barrels on this corner. Looking over at screenshots to see the specific arrangement of everything. I'll put a couple more trap doors here. There was another shelf right here on this end. What we can do next is take a lantern, put on this shelf. Oh, did I not? I put these down to the, this block underneath and then we could put put a lantern on top there we go and another lantern over here just to help create more light a pumpkin and a watermelon place them wherever you feel like put them this is basically just a bunch of like cooking supplies so you can have we can take a couple of pots place them on this shelf put like a mushroom and a bamboo in them just like more like just food that they're growing and could be 
through, thrown into a stew. That actually does pretty much sum up everything that is actually in the vanilla items. So going to a supplementary, supplementary mod, put some item shelves up here, put a sack there. And then what's pretty cool are these jars. And then you can actually, that's actually a really nice sound. <laughs> you can fill them up with water, with milk, which I think is pretty cool. You can actually, got this cage here, and I decided to get a chicken and place it inside a cage. And then you can place, uh, I don't think that's not, that was not how it was supposed to work. I think you, yeah, shift right click to place down the cage to get a chicken on the inside. Uh, you know, just to be there, ready to slaughter <laughs> for some dinner tonight. And then another item is this hourglass. I have to place it on the table. You can place a block of sand in it, and then now you got like a cooking timer here. Going on to the final stretch of items that we have for this, we can take some bowls, just put them on the shelves, and then, you know, a goblet with some water in it if you really, really want to. And finally, you can actually... This is not very historical, but I thought it would be just enhance the aesthetic a little bit, create some pancakes, put some honey on it. I figure just to make that look a little nicer and that should do it. I do like the kitchen a lot, I, especially the supplementaries mod. It does enhance the aesthetic a lot. There's just a lot more you know, the stack, the, the sacks, the jars, the item shelves, the cages. They really do add a lot to environments like this. That is the kitchen. Next up is actually going to be this room right here, which I decided to make a barracks. Hang on. All right, so like I said, we're going to build the barracks next. And this is kind of where the designs for a castle keep can vary. I mean, we did create a very large dining hall, great hall area, and then a separate kitchen, which I mean, especially on a smaller keep, the dining area and the kitchen area would probably be all one room. This is kind of a luxurious keep, so we're going to have a lot of just designated rooms for a barracks I mean honestly sometimes a dining hall could be just turned into a, a sleeping area for with a bunch of beds if need be like pull out a bunch of what would be considered cots uh, but a barracks this room could be a barracks it could also be like uh, a chapel built into the keep another option but keeps don't always have to have chapels it really just depends on how much room there is and what you can act what the Lord actually wants to put into their castle so first things first, we're going to build a hearth in the corner of the room for warmth. And then from here, we're going to place a bunch of light gray, yeah, light gray beds in rows. As such, you can have seven loyal soldiers or knights uh, sleeping in this room. And then we can put some storage items here and there. Like, I mean, there's going to be a sack there, a couple barrels, like a lantern on top, a chest. And then you can actually put some armor stands here and there so that the soldiers can hang their armor on whatever. They can hang their armor on the stands when they're not, not wearing them or when they're changing. And well, actually that pretty much sums up the barracks. This is like literally everything that's in here. It's just a bunch of beds and some storage and a hearth for warmth. But like I said, this could be a chapel or maybe another storage room, kind of like if you didn't really have an undercroft or anything like that. So. It's up to you, but this is what I decided to put in my keep. Next, we can finally work our way upstairs and add decorate the rooms up here. Uh, of course, first we're going to take spruce slabs and fill in the floors in between the spruce beams. Since there is sufficient lighting underneath now, bats won't be spawning down there and causing me headaches. <laughs> Whoops. Alrighty, so that is, that covers the floors. And what we're gonna do next actually is take light gray stained glass panes. I don't know, you can't really see it in the inventory that well, especially on the, uh, let me open up the inventory right down the hot bar. Yeah, you can still see it well enough. We're gonna fill in the windows with these glass panes, which uh, are basically a neutral enough color where you can look through it and it's not affecting the color too much. Do the same thing in these, what's going to be the, a couple bedrooms. And then I think the next thing we're, we are going to do is put in the ceiling. What we're going to do first is take strip spruce logs and bridge them all the way across the, 
across the space except leave one block here empty. Over here we can definitely bridge them all the way across. And then we can take deep slate tile slabs, put them right on top. And then in between, there's three blocks of space on each side of the spruce logs. What we're going to do is put two slabs on the top half of the block and then a slab on the lower part of the block. And that's going to help create a sort of triangular appearance to the to the roof. So just build them all the way across. And we'll actually put a trap door right here. And of course, we can't forget, just like in the gatehouse, take stone brick stairs and create drainages for the water to flow through in these corners and I'm actually going to go take care of the rest of the roofs and I'll be right back. I know what I just said about bats being a headache but I am going to be lighting up these rooms pretty soon anyway so I think we should be okay. But yeah we can actually start decorating these rooms. First things first this giant room right here is going to be the Salar which is basically a reading room. A, a reading room, a, a medieval lounge room is basically what that entails. Uh, in the corner over here, we're going to build a larger hearth or like fireplace for warmth as such. And then we're going to create a bunch of chairs over here on this end out of dark oak stairs and actually take dark oak signs and create uh, arms on these chairs or I guess couches in a way. They don't look very comfortable couches. I guess they'd be benches is what they actually are since they're made of wood. And then you can actually take spruce trap doors and put a lantern on top of that. And we can take another a couple more dark oak uh, chairs or stairs and make chairs out of them over here. Put another lantern on top. You know, basically this is like a, a shared, a lounging area, a little table there. And then we can place some spruce trap doors and create a railing around this stairway so that nobody falls down. A table starting here, two blocks on the third block away from the wall, creates a table out of dark oak slabs and stairs. You can put a, not put a lantern on that, but I think that might actually be time for the next, yep, for the more decorations, which this is what I used to light up over here. More candles, which actually, Candles. Why was I saying candles? Wait. My apologies. I don't know why I thought candles were not a vanilla material. I I kind of forgot about that. That is a fairly recent addition to Minecraft, so I guess I just kind of forgot about that. I wasn't I haven't been keeping up to I haven't been keeping up that well with the new Minecraft updates, like the new content and stuff, so I just assumed this was part of the supplementaries mod. What I did discover that is pretty cool are these uh, candle holders, which Put the candles into a nice little holder and you can actually add to it to create these candelabras i think is what they're called and i think that, i think that's really cool that's that's what the supplementaries mod does so if you want to enhance your candles that is actually really cool that would make that this like especially this area I'm just messing stuff up that would make this spot this uh over here this Right here, right by the uh, the head table for the dining hall, the great hall look re much better, and I do think that actually improves the aesthetic a lot more. Man, updates are crazy. <laughs> anyway, we'll leave these as they are, but and we'll move on to the rest of decorating the solar. Wow, I can't believe I. I need to check out some of this new stuff out, see if there's anything we can improve this castle with. But right now we can place some carpets here and there just to make the Solara look a little more comfy. Uh, take some bookshelves. Create a... Uh, uh, just put them right there. Take some spruce trap doors and... Give a nice like border around the bookshelves. Let's see, we got some ladders here too, which we can use to get up to this trap door to get to the roof. And then we 
what we can actually do is take a globe, put it right here on this table, which, uh, little known fact, the medieval people did know that the world was round. So <laughs> having a globe would not be out of place, I think, in a medieval castle. Anyway, then we can actually take some books and stack them on the table, because that's what the Supplementaries mod also allows us to stack books on a table. And I think that's really that's a really cool feature. And lastly, we can put some paintings on the walls. And what I actually did was I used the Famous Paintings resource pack to add some historical paintings to the walls, which I think just makes everything look that much nicer, because the default paintings in Minecraft, I think, are pretty lame. But the Famous Paintings mo uh, resource pack allows you to get these just beautiful paintings on the walls. And I pulled out some stone bricks to help guide the size of the paintings, because it can be a little difficult to get the right size painting. Uh, over here at the end, I put this giant painting of the School of Athens by Raphael. And then over here, I put three one by one size paintings on the wall. So I put them in these gaps right here. First one I did was my notes, my written notes are a little blurry or a little scribbly. The Fighting Timurere. I should have looked up how to pronounce these words before I restarted recording by Joseph Mallard William Turner. Uh, man, the next painting is not any easier to pronounce. Uh, a bar at the something something by Edouard Manet, Manet. The Last Meninas by Diego Velasquez. I am going to, yeah, I'll be right back to pronounce those names correctly. All right, so once again, the paintings, the uh, School of Athens by Raphael, the Fighting Temeraire by Joseph Mallard William Turner, a bar at the Folies Berger by Edouard Manet, and then Las Meninas by Diego Val Valiquez. I think I got all this right, or pretty close to right. I hope so. <laughs> uh, Four languages are not always my strong suit. I hope I got those right this time around, because I did not do... I wrote down the names, but I forgot to research the actual pronunciations of these names. So, yeah. But this is the Salar, and, you know, like I said, it's basically a reading lounge, and I decided to put up some paintings that just enhance the aesthetic of the... Of the surrounding area because because obviously you know having uh, decorations and artwork around you is more pleasing and that's exactly what the medieval people did not specifically these paintings probably but yeah none of these would be medieval era paintings uh, renaissance or post renaissance but still medieval people definitely loved artwork oftentimes the insides of a castle were not just stone bricks but paintings either directly on the wall or uh, cloth with intricate designs painted onto them or threaded into them to help decorate the walls and this just just to help sell that a little bit all right so as it turns out i did need to put in some more lighting here and there because i stepped away from my cast a little bit so i could look at the other one to gain to figure out if i got all the details right and i come back and a bunch of bat spawns so Definitely you can put up some more sconces, torches, lanterns, whatever you want, just to keep the lighting uh, at a base minimum. I actually did put a sconce right here, and this is actually something I did put here when I first made the castle, because this was definitely a very dark stairwell. <laughs> but yeah, you could definitely do lanterns or sconces or whatever you want. It's completely up to you, if just to keep the lighting up in these rooms. But next we are going to start building or decorating these two bedrooms. So now this is going to be the first bedroom. It's going to be a two wide bed right there using blue beds. And we're actually put a couple of, well actually just a, one large chest right there. And we're going to put yet another fireplace in this corner for warmth. How did that happen? And there's one of those pesky bats. I thought I killed them all, but they're still around here somewhere. <laughs> but the thing about bedrooms is that most people in the medieval period didn't really have access to have their own bed. Uh, basically, like in a you know, like the common people, one family would share a whole bed or a couple beds. This is a very luxurious castle, so once again, like the Lord's going to get his own bed and. With the Lord and the Lady, and like somebody else over here, or even the Lord would get his own bed, and the Lady would get her own bed. 
uh, then what we can do next is actually over here in this corner is create like a uh, wardrobe with a couple spruce doors uh, on this second block from the wall right here and then place a couple trap doors to create the walls and the roof of the wardrobe and then we got this little I think it's a pretty cool design or a pretty clever design and then we can create a little table over here which we'll put a lantern on that shortly and as for paintings this one's gonna be a little easier <laughs> to describe these paintings this first one is going to be pretty obvious. We all know this one, the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, also by Leonardo da Vinci, I put the Last Supper over here. And then on the third painting I put into this room, I think I know what, what I'm trying to get here. Yeah, it's that. The Storm on the Sea of Galilee by Rembrandt. I think I put that on the right... Yeah, that's the right block. Moving on to some more materials. Going to create... A little desk and study area right here using some dark oak materials. I'm gonna create a high back chair, this time with some arms on it. Maybe we could put like a blue carpet for like a placemat or something right there. Then we can create an actual like rug right here. Uh, whoops. Put some lanterns and candles down for lighting. Armor stand, which went right there, and I actually put ceremonial ar knightly armor on this armor stand because it's just very, very nice looking, very royal looking. And then last thing actually was spruce trap door that went right there, and then I actually put a pot with the flowering azalea in it. So this completes the first bedroom. Uh, basically, this is supposed to be the Lord's bedroom, so there is a study area over here. And like a suit of very prestigious armor over here. And yeah, we're going to go decorate the other room. All right, now we're going to build this second bedroom. It's going to mirror the first bedroom a lot. For example, a couple of beds right there. I did not put a chest here for storage. I did put a wardrobe right here on the corner. In this corner, I built the last fireplace of this keep which one thing I did realize is I did not include any chimneys or any ways for the smoke to get out which I'll definitely try to incorporate in my next build. If we're going to put up some paintings here and there. This one's going to be a Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande Giat by George Surratt. First is sunflowers and then the other one is almond, almond blossom. Once again, both of them by Van Gogh. This is A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte by George Gerard. That's the uh, pronunciation of that name. Don't know my French very well, <laughs> clearly. There's also going to be a study area for this room too. Once again, using dark oak. There we go. There we can put a lantern right on this corner. Get rid of this lantern. I was going to put a trap door on this corner. Put a pot up here with a lily of the valley in it. Put a couple books here, a loom back there. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. And I feel like I need a little more light in this room. I think what I'm gonna do is put another lantern right here on the, in this corner, just so that there's sufficient lighting. But that should actually do it for this bedroom. All right, we're basically on the home stretch here. What we can do next is go to the roof of the keep and put torches or sconces up here to light the to light the area so that mobs can't spawn up here. And the last thing we're gonna do is add a postern to the bottom of the castle. What this is is basically a back door for escape in case the com castle is completely overrun and the defenders need to escape. So we're gonna go down here back to the Undercroft and go to this three by three space that we created earlier. And we're gonna dig it out uh, a little ways down. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna build it like, th like that. And then create a little rail over railing over here. And then from here we can start to add spiral staircase going down I think yeah I build my st spiral staircases like this 
And then put trap doors. Trap doors. Slabs as such. And I'm gonna make my way down. Just to like basically a couple stories. Not gonna go very deep for for this video. Basically put the stairs right side up. Right up against the the central wooden beam and then put down some spruce slabs and of course we're going to put sconces where we can to light it up I'm trying to think of a good spot that should work yeah kind of like right above your head and yeah make your way down and then from here you just build a tunnel uh this will a postern will work on you know basically on a castle that's on an elevation so that when you dig your way down the tunnel you will eventually oh gold ore you will uh, eventually breach the mountainside and then you can, you know, the uh, defenders can escape from there so we can like Put a door, say, right here, and imagine this is like the, the side of a mountain. You can come out and escape. Uh, the re again, a postern is a backdoor escape route for the defenders, and that's basically what that is right there. Like, it's not that complicated. I'm gonna kind of clean this up here a little, but yeah, just dig your way down and make your way out. And uh, some of you might wonder if this is a weakness in a castle. And generally not. You could put just a few guards down here. And with this being such a narrow tunnel, uh, it just takes a few guards to be able to defend against attackers. And I would say that actually about sums up the build for the keep. I'm going to go close out this video. And that'll be about it. And that should be it for the keep of Castle Caramel. I apologize that this video went on for so long. There was a lot of details to cover, especially when it came to the interior design. Plus, my tiredness probably made tutoring this build far less efficient. I've been getting enough sleep, so I'm not sure what is going on. But anyway, I hope this video was still informative and helped you all learn something new about castle keeps. Please subscribe so you can stay tuned for future videos, including the next part in this building series. Also leave a like and comment down below. I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, farewell.